Hey, what's up, guys? This 2.0 Elixir Super Cycle Log Bait deck surprisingly surpassed all the other Log Bait decks in the game to become the best Log Bait deck in Clash Royale. The ranked 46 player in the world is dominating with this deck, while all the other Log Bait players are sitting at the bottom of the top 200. By removing all spells in the deck, you're able to add pure 1 and 2 Elixir spam. And their logs will be out of sight when you drop Goblin Barrels on Towers and Princesses at the River. The more cards you spam, the faster you get back to Evolutions, guaranteeing you more positive Elixir traits than your opponent. If you get good enough to play this deck at the highest level, you can beat any deck in the game. Even if their cards counter you, if you keep it a low elixir game, nothing's stopping Evolved Wallbreakers and split up Evolved Skeletons. If you only have one evolution, use Evolved Wallbreakers. It's time to assert dominance with a log bait deck that seemed like a meme, but in reality was the only log bait left at the top. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And big log bait love to everyone that's supporting the channel with Critter Code Sir Tag. Yo, we're playing against someone that finished 26 in the world. What is Clash Royale cooking for us right now? Also, he's got Cannoneer, which is something that I truly fear. If we're playing into Cannoneer with Wallbreakers, the Wallbreakers get senselessly slaughtered. So that is not a good matchup for us in most situations. If we go for Wallbreakers at the river, they just die. So I have to pair it with something at all points in time. Since this guy is going to have the Mighty Miner, I think it's important for us to dedicate some Elixir here on the drill, but also make sure that we don't overspend. I'm going to Ice Spirit here, and then we're going to try to defend this minimalistically by going in for the Goblins and then probably nothing else. I think if we go for Wall Breakers, we want to go for something else with it. So maybe I can go for something like Goblin Barrel here, and then Wall Breakers as well, and then try to go Goblins on the right-hand side so we can force out Elixir simultaneously in all directions. I don't think that we're going to get that much damage, if anything at all, but we are cycling to our evolutions, so we can get them in a pretty sketchy position if we can get Evolved Skeletons on the field. At least that's what I'm hoping for. There's no doubt he's going to counter this with a bomb. Oh, I thought he's going to go for an Evolved Bomber. Wow, he really didn't do that. Interesting. Anyway, we're going to go Goblin Barrel here. We'll go Ice Spirit, and then we'll go for Wall Breakers to go and pull that back. Or, yeah, let's go Wall Breakers because he might click the ability. It'd be pretty fun to see that. He didn't do it, unfortunately. We can go for Cannon against the Evolved Bomber, and then we can get value from that transaction. Because our cannon is going to definitely activate King Tower. And then the bomber is going to lock onto that. And then the fire spirit can clean up the rest of the goblins. So overall, decent transaction. We're still down quite a bit. I mean, he's a top ranked player with a super fast cycle. And uh, definitely a matchup that would be rather scary for us if we don't play perfect. So this is what we wanted. We wanted to get him in a situation where he's forced to log on top of the goblin barrel. Please log the goblin barrel. Going to go for a fire spirit and miss it. Let's go. That's some nice damage. We can go for evolved skeletons here split. Then we can Ice Spirit on the Mighty Miner. And then we can go for Evolved Wallbreakers on the other side and Ice Spirit to make sure that we can start to multiply like crazy. So, we get a Tesla, we get an ability, and he loses the Mighty Miner. Also, since he doesn't have Tesla in Cycle, I think that we can go in for a Princess here and try to break through. Obviously, he's going to try to log this or do something like that. Yeah, the Evolved Skeletons? Yes! Look at the damage, even after the nerf. That's why it's strong. Everyone that's running Cannoneer is running the freaking fastest cycle decks in the game and they feel like they're safe but no one is safe from this deck even a rank 26 player still got slimed by the skeletons i mean the game is still far from over i have to still play this really well i can't let the evolve bomber lock onto my tower so notice i'm dropping a very high cannon very high ice spirit and we're saying hello to value all the way around if he fire spirits we're to fire spirit in the face of his fire spirit make sure that our fire spirit takes that connection and then if he decides to spam more stuff at the river we've got the cannon so we've got everything covered look at that bomber getting predicted bro yeah you know when we're playing against people at your caliber running your disgusting decks we have to out finesse you and play a little bit better otherwise we're gonna get astonished demoralized and destroyed because there's no way of keeping up with your type of spam we had to evolve to a 2.0 elixir cycle and make our plays the best they could be it's satisfying to see our Super Cycle deck giving Wham the Slam. After beating the rank 26th player in the world, we've pushed up to top 5,000. This dude's got Little Prince in the banner, and I feel like he's probably going to be playing a beatdown deck, because he's not cycling his stuff, and he's also going to have the Princess Tower, which is a nice thing to see. Also, the top ranked player that plays this deck really does run Princess Tower, even though everyone else at top ladder is running Cannoneer. So it's nice to have a deck like this one that has a fast cycle, doesn't have any small spells, where the Cannoneer would kind of get crushed if the opponent decides to go in for bait cards. This deck needs the Princess Tower, so then you can have the reliability of running more one elixir cost cards and not have to rely on a log to go and clean up whatever skeletons are spawning from the graveyard. So we're going to go in for our skeletons here, and then we'll go goblins, and then we can go for an ice beard to pull back the knight. I do think this is really good for me. Genuinely, I don't understand what he's going to be doing besides Graveyard or a Balloon deck. Who's that 
Pokemon! I think it's better to be a balloon deck, so that's what I'm banking on. I'm gonna go wall breakers, pull back the baby dragon for a short bit, and then, ooh, it might be graveyard. After we see archers, it's bound to be graveyard now, right? What if I go for an ice spirit and then protect the princess? Oh, he's gonna freeze. There's no way. There's no way. He went into Inferno Dragon. It's gonna go under the goblins, right? Oh, come on. The goblins got a nerf, so their spawn time is delayed. So even though I ended up having pretty fast reaction speed, it didn't work out. And yes, that, that's my excuse. That's my excuse, guys. Definitely not my inability to make a prediction. It was my reaction speed falling and failing there. Anyway, we're gonna go for our wall breakers here on the right-hand side, force out some extra elixir. He's gonna be trying to tornado that, which was beyond interesting for me. I don't think that's very good. Oh, look at that. Even though he went for the archers, it wasn't able to hit all the goblins. And the goblin barrel is just getting so much value there. And then we can go back for another one. He thought he was done, but the fun hasn't even started for us. We're gonna go in for our skeletons and watch. I think the skeletons are able to body block the Inferno Dragon. See, see, I told you, I told you guys. It wasn't me, it was the goblins fault because the skeletons were able to survive and actually take the targeting from the Inferno Dragon. See, it makes me so happy to not have a huge dosage of copium and actually be able to be correct about something. Anyway, we're gonna go wall breakers in the right. We definitely expect him to go in for a lot of spam soon. If we ice spirit, I think that the knight's just gonna die, which is pretty cool for me. I bet you he goes in for a graveyard or something of the sort. We can go in for a cannon up top so our princesses are able to force out more elixir. Forcing a tornado is funny because now I can go in for an Inferno Dragon counter with skeletons, go in for goblins after, and then the Inferno Dragon just doesn't do the damage it's hoping for. It's literally sitting there not hitting anything. <gasps> the bowler, no! Oh, that was really rough, my guy. That did not feel good. Also, you just ate wall breakers like a freaking snack. What are you doing? All right, are we switching sides? I think we're going off as a lane now. We're gonna go princess here. We're gonna force out an Inferno Dragon that you did not want to drop. And now we can go in for a fire spirit, pull back the Inferno Dragon with goblins, and look at how much damage I'm getting. The only way he wins this is by getting an Inferno Dragon on my tower. So I need to stop that right now. We're gonna Ice Spirit, and then we're gonna go for a Princess and prioritize defending there. Then we're gonna go for Wall Breakers and also go in for Evolve Skeletons left-hand side because I bet you he has to freeze on this. And I think that the Wall Breakers are gonna connect. Yeah, he's just dead. He was literally on the edge of despair on both sides. And no matter where I went, he was gonna get blown over. Spax got spanked by the Ceaseless Bait Cycle. Looking at the matchup afterward, the guy didn't even have a single opportunity to go in for his graveyard. We literally have to look at the match history to find out what he was playing. It's and we got another one. This guy's popping out of a cake with his miner, and we're ready to go and snack on his towers. So I hope we can have a feast with this fire spirit. I would love to lock and load because that would be like 300 damage if he just lets it happen. Yo, the fire spirit's gonna jump on the archers. I don't know if you guys know that bug, but the archers feel like the prince's tower is gonna be able to finish off the fire spirit. So obviously, if they don't want to waste their precious arrows, they walk right into the fire spirit and take damage. Clash Royale needs to fix that bug, but I'm not going to say anything to them because it's working out well for us. And if you guys are wondering, I, I actually have said this to them a lot. It's very frustrating to lose range cards that should not die to other cards that, you know, are very easy for it to counter. Anyway, we're to Ice Spirit. It's going to be one of the best Ice Spirits ever. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. It clobbered. The, oh no, I was going to say the bats and the bowler, but I don't know. I'm so incredibly crestfallen. I have no words for this, guys. If someone's going to go in for a giant in the back like this, this is bound to be one of the worst matchups in the entire game for us. If we're playing against Giant Graveyard. We don't have any small spells. It's a very, 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 very tough matchup. It's winnable if we play perfect, but it shouldn't be winnable. I have to go in for an Ice Spirit here, and then I can go in for this, and then maybe we can get back to another cannon. I'm hoping that this works out. I can't guarantee it, though. We're gonna try to get a Fire Spirit down, and I believe, maybe, in Miracles. I don't think so. This is looking really bad. How do we come out of that alive? Wow, we must have played that a lot better than I thought. Anyway, Wallbreakers, go right into a bowler and die. Probably. Said someone. Maybe. I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. We forced out arrows and also bats. They spend a lot more elixir than us. That's good. If we go for Skeletons plus Goblin Barrel, these Skeletons might lock into the tower. As unreasonable as this might seem, this is looking like the dream. Also, forcing out the Night Witch is one of the best cards for us to counter because now we can go for Goblins on top of the Giant when he decides to drop it. And that's huge for me. I don't want to go for an Ice Spirit unless I absolutely need to, which I obviously will. And then he's probably going to go for a Bowler, which I don't want to see, but we're going to drop our Wall Breakers anyway directly into a Bowler. Where's the Bully? Oh, wait. Why are you bullying there? He missed! He missed! Oh my gosh. I knew he wasn't supposed to do that, but he did it anyway. Wait, the Prince is going to stay alive if we played this perfect. I hope he did. He's going to lose... 
His evolved bats too. He should have dropped that behind the giant. I swear, giant graveyard players are straight up built different. They are built different with their decision making. All right, we're gonna go for evolved skeletons here. We're gonna go for another goblin barrel, and we have to go and destroy this giant. If he doesn't have anything to keep this giant alive, we might be able to win the game. The goblin barrel is gonna force that extra elixir. We're back to another goblin barrel like we never even left. Why is he focusing on defending? This is literally the worst matchup I could get in existence, and we're making it happen. He isn't even able to do anything. He is literally getting scrambled up like eggs. My guy is getting egg-headed right here. He doesn't even know. All right, well, this is bad. This is really bad. I don't think I can defend against the graveyard. I need to somehow stop the graveyard skeleton when I have no small spells. Please let me survive for one more second. Let's go. I had evolved wall breakers and other stuff, so I think I would have taken the tower on the right-hand side with a 4,000 HP tower on the left. So it wasn't that scary. But man, it was really satisfying outplaying one of the most skillless decks in the game. Even at higher ranks where your opponent's top 4,000 in the world at the end of the season, they're still gonna lose when they're running Giant Graveyard. The outplay potential with this deck, even against the most supreme hard counters, is unreal. Yo, dude's gonna have a Hog Rider banner, but it's in a stone statue. So maybe if he just stands still for a second, we can slime his tower real quick. He's not gonna give us that opportunity. He goes in for wall breakers, and he's also not running a Hog Rider cycle deck. So I think we have to go for a princess to pounce on the opportunity to get damage. And we also allocate a goblins in the back because most people drop their miners in the back when they've identified that we're running like some sort of bait deck without tornado. So he made the right opportunity to go in for the miner in the back. And I guessed it. I predicted him. Okay, wait, we can go for skeletons and ice spirit here and probably get away with wall breakers to go and kite back that night. Also, I can go for a cannon, shut down everything. I don't even have to go wall breakers, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't really want to give him off the hook right now. I want to hook him on the side of dropping logs, snowballs, bar barrels on top of our wall breakers. And because he just used his log, you already know we're going to go through with our goblin barrel plus fire spirit, so you can't go for bats and shut that down. Also, I want to go for evolved skeletons. Most people don't do this right now, but I think it's better, even though it is like probably going to die. We could get an ice spirit here. Maybe we'll make him freak out and drop a spell. Please? Yo, the skeletons are still swarming. We got him to drop wall breakers. He's got good mechanics to be able to stop that and use wall breakers to kite it back because for the most part, ice spirit plus skeletons there would force out a small spell that he can't afford to cycle. Put a fire spirit on all of those bats. They should all be dead. And then we can go wall breakers again. Notice how we're always applying opposite lane pressure with the princess so that he's forced to drop units there and also on our wall breakers or goblin barrel on the side that we actually want. And if he ignores the princess, we might be able to switch sides and just win the game with princess cycle. That's another cool thing about this deck. So we're keeping our elixir low and our opponent's elixir low, as I've said before. That's how you deal with finishing blow. You do not want to be at a high elixir bank in any match, any game, because then you're not going to be able to get the trades that you're looking for. Your opponent will be able to control the pace of the game and then you just lose. Like these Evo bats, he wants to get something out of, but he won't. He's just going to sack all of them. And then we can go in for an ice spirit plus goblins. I don't think that we're going to be able to kill the wall breakers, but maybe we're lucky enough. Oh, we do. Let's go. Let's go wall breakers on the right. Go princess on top of the spear goblins. And then keep up the pressure. Because he has to defend against this princess now. It's immediately on his face. He's looking at this and he's like, what are you, why? How did I deserve to take all this damage? The answer is, I don't think you did. You just found yourself in an unlucky opportunity where even though you're running one of the fastest decks in the game, ours is simply faster. So we're going to go for our skeletons here. Try to make a prediction on whatever he drops. He did not drop anything, unfortunately. But the skeletons are really hurting him. It's making him drop cards he doesn't want to. And I think if we just eat most of the damage here, we can go for wall breakers, pull the knight to the other side, and then force out even more elixir. The best thing about this deck is this relentless pressure. So even though this guy feels like he was in a decent spot, he never got into the spot that he needed to to be able to continuously spam us in the right direction. Yo, we even activate King Tower. Imagine if I could pull back the knight with a goblin barrel, so then the, the princess locks tower. That would have been a huge W. It did not happen. We have to go fire spirit, ice spirit here so we can kill those bats. Uh, uh, sir... Sir, I'm kind of scared. I'm actually scared. I can eat the wall breakers, but I can't eat the bats. We're going to go for this. We're going to eat some minor damage. Then we're going to go for a goblin barrel. He actually played that really, really well. I'm surprised that he played it that well. We should be able to outcycle his log, though. We do have one of the cheapest decks in the game. So we're going to go for wall breakers here. We're going to be back to goblin barrel. And I think we probably win the game because he just went for a poison. I don't think you're allowed to do that. If you're down that amount of elixir, you can't comfortably clean up that the goblins are gonna lock out the tower and win us the game you cycle poison that's four elixir i'm spending one elixir class cards and i'm obviously gonna get back to the goblin barrel before you're back to log he spent our entire cycle in just one card so jumping into the game against jaws it's time to swim around this guy like a shark 
I'm ready to go for an Ice Spirit and then a Fire Spirit and then Skeletons. We're dropping every Spirit available to crush the Miner Spirit. And getting both Wall Breakers to connect is really good for us. The one huge downside is I don't have robust anti-air defenses against the Lava Hound deck. So I could go for Princesses and stack them up. But is it going to be reliable? The answer is a resounding no. Fortunately, we were able to force out arrows. And then I can go for Princess now. And maybe cycle two cans. If I'm quick enough, I might be able to do this. So, I'm going to go Ice Spirit, Fire Spirit, Skeletons. Ah, oh, it's not happening. I'm not back to cannon. I'm not back to cannon. He's going to zap me. If only I was able to do that in single elixir, it is possible. But you need to have your entire card cycle ready for it. He's going to spam WoW, so he's not a very nice guy. He's definitely in a pretty awesome position. He's going to have Miner and Arrows to snipe our princesses. And he's up a lot of elixir and up damage. However, we have the evolutions. So maybe we can still make this happen. And the guy's not very nice. He's going and spamming the Goblin like Flame Emote when he's up. Wait, I think the Wall Breakers will break through if he didn't go for Arrows. He still went for Barbarians and Arrows, so that's 8 Elixir spent. And maybe the Princess can put in some work. Let's go to Evolve Skeletons with Goblins on the right. Fire Spirit here, and then Wall Breakers on the left. If these Skeletons lock out of the tower, that'd be huge. It didn't happen, but the Wall Breakers most certainly will. Now, if he decides to go in for a Zap, it's too late. Then the Princess will lock onto the tower and finish off the minions at the same time. But I don't think this guy's very happy. It looked like it was a really promising position for him, but it's all falling apart. So, I can go Goblins. And then I can also have the Princess lock onto the Minion Horde. He has to know that the Minion Horde's dead. He needs to drop something else. That Princess just needs one more shot. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about. He's laughing so hard. I mean, dude, you can't control your laughter and you can't control the game. How does that make you feel, brother? So, I'm going to go in for Wall Breakers again. Fully expect him to go Barbarian. So, we're going to prioritize using our Princess against that. And then if he decides to go and spam us, I think that we're going to be okay this time. I believe that we can get back to two cannons just to like kite him all the way around the map, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Even though he's got a balloon, we're making the best out of the situation and popping his party. We're going to fire spirit there, and then we can go in for our, our... Oh, no. Oh, no. That's really bad. I didn't think that he would go for an evolved zap, and now he's laughing at me again. Dang it. Screw you, guy. All right. We're going to go wall breakers here, and we're going to go for our goblins first to tank. We forced out the barbarians. He doesn't even arrow what he needs. Oh, my gosh. Wait. This is hilarious. We might actually win. There's actually a small chance that I win this game. They're going for skeletons here. We princess, it locks onto the tower first, right? Uh, sir, sir, who allows you to do that? If we can go goblin barrel, that might do enough damage. All I have to do is kill this princess on top of the uh, balloon and we win. Oh, from the jaws of defeat, we bounce back and this guy got busted down. It feels ridiculous to make a comeback against a Lovehound Arrows Miner deck when you're down an entire tower and looking in the face of a gigantic loss. I'm honestly at a loss of words for how we bounce back. If I had to sum it down to one sentence, I guess this creative cycle deck creates uncontrollable chaos. Log the like button if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.